a 10-year deal. Wow. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Uh, all of us would love to have a 10-year contract. If you do and you get one, it means that the issuer of the contract has incredible faith in you. And guess what? The new head basketball coach, well, I should not say the new. It feels like a, a new, the, the current women's basketball coach at URI certainly has received that message from the brass. And you're going to meet her tonight. So how about that? Uh, and because I want to spend some time and because I can't wait to talk to Tammy, I just really don't feel like digging into the multiple issues of the day. Other than to say the news this week wasn't Ukraine, although it should be. The news this week wasn't a lot of the stuff that's happening at the State House, although it should be. The news was this, right? Uh, the Academy's thinking about disciplining Will Smith over this Oscars incident. You saw it, didn't you see it? I saw it live. I don't always watch the Oscars. In fact, my wife and daughter went to bed and I was about to clean up the mess. Matt, run this thing. It's just, these are pictures where you just have pictures of the, <laughs> of the slap. And then I get with some, some more photos of him leaving and or coming. I don't know, but also those who were consoling him during the break and da da da. Look, I, I got to tell you, and then Will Smith, of course, um, uh, I should say, uh, Chris Rock, rather, appeared last night in Boston and kind of hedged a bet against commentary. And people are nuts and they're scalping tickets as if this is the end of the world. Look, bottom line is, Will Smith did something that should have been arrestable on the spot. On the spot. That it wasn't arrestable on the spot leaves us in this crazy place. He'll get sanctioned. He'll keep his Oscar. By the way, ironically, I watched King Richard last night. You're, watching, you're seeing this on Friday and Sunday. I watched it the night after the Oscars because I was interested in how he won the Academy Award. What a phenomenal job he did in that movie. So look, it, it tells you that there's a human condition behind every actor. Uh, they all walk and chew gum the same way we do. He made a terrible mistake. He's got some issues, he's got some issues from his early childhood that he's got to deal with. Um, but you can't do that. And it would have been a slap on the wrist during the whole judicial process anyway. Uh, but the Academy is one thing. The group of people who were there, who nurtured him all that evening, have something to think about. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, in the meantime, I don't know, I got a sad card holder here. I didn't even, I didn't even realize that. You know what? We'll get to the package in a second. You, you have a thought on this? This is a pregame show. Do you have a thought on this whole thing? I do. I was uh, watching it and watching it over and over. Um, the Oscars, For technique? Uh, aesthetically, <laughs> yes. Um, the Oscars are the pinnacle of your career. Every actor, that's their night. Um, outside of the actual action of assault, because that's what it was. It was assault. I never knew we needed bodyguards at the Oscars. I never know, are you going to need bodyguards now? It, it, it was a joke. It was a a little bit of a tasteless joke. However, it was a joke. Um, and he should have been removed. Um, there should have never been a discussion as the show goes on. That night was ruined. Everyone's moment was ruined. And for the, your whole career you work, for that pinnacle, it's like an athlete. Um, and it was taken away from everybody, mm. um, including the movie King Richard, including Serena's, sure. the, the Williams sisters and the father. And so, it, sh it should have been dealt with on the spot, um, and I believe that. And I love Will Smith. He made a grave mistake for whatever reason, but it was a mistake. Yep. And um, I'm, a, I'm a mentor. I'm a teacher. Um, I would never teach my students that I could lose my cool, no matter what I went through. Um, Other than a technical foul every once in a while. I, I haven't gotten one of those. None. No, not my three years coaching thus far. See, Dan, I, do your homework, will you please? You know, I try to teach by example, lead by example in young women, and violence is never the answer. Um, never had a technical foul? Not in my three years here, no. Is, it a, is, it, is that a mission for you, not to get a technical foul, or is that something that is just something you've been able to avoid? I've, I've, 
I've never used it as a tactic to inspire my team yet. Um, I've never lost my call to the point where I couldn't control myself. I take pride in that. Right. I like to kill them with kindness. Right. You know, you get more bees with honey than you do vinegar. So I try to get them on my side before I attack them. And, and so that's just who I am, and mm. I know who I am. And so I haven't lost my call to that point. And I don't know what it feels like to lose your cool to that point that you could physically walk up to someone and punch them or slap them. Um, I just don't. And so he'll he'll have to ap apologize. He'll have to. Well, he's done that. He's apologized. Know, and he'll have to get the the um, yeah, whatever every, they sanction. Well, everyone's with. between a rock and a hard place. You're not going to have a criminal indictment here. You're not going to have anything like that. And the academy's going to have to figure it out. But I think the other group that really has to, to to face off for this is is those who just you know cheered him on and as he as he wept through his acceptance speech and and tried to make you could see him just trying to make an excuse for what had happened, uh, distracted from his great work. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those situations. All right. You know what? I'm going to pause here. Where, 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 where am I? Where am I? I'm going to pause here. When we come back, we'll reset this conversation for the express purpose of its intensity. And now to the point. Here was the story. After a run at the A-10 title and the second postseason appearance in school history, URI locked up their leader for the next decade. Tammy Reese agreeing to a contract that ties her to Rhodey till 2032. When I did my press conference here, I meant it. I found the right school for me. It was like that perfect match. And no one could tear me from this. No matter how bigger or better, how shinier things looked, Deep down underneath, there's a reason you make every decision in your life. I tell my kids this all the time. For me, this was the fit. The 10 year commitment that Rhode Island is making a big tool in the recruiting world. Reese is aimed higher in targeting future Rams for a long term deal, helping to put to bed any rumors of a future departure. We battled it all um, summer, last summer, with some blue bloods and trying to get players. Um, and now it's, it's done. So and any player they know that, that we're talking to, we're good. I'm going to be here. Um, and that's why my buyout's so high. It's not like people in women's basketball can just throw money away. So the, to show recruits that we're not, I'm not going anywhere and you know, you'll come here and I'll be your coach for four years, I promise you that. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. It's really, it's, it's, it's a heck of a statement. It's the very thing that college basketball coaches need, and that is time. They're all looking for four years plus a year to be able to say to recruits, I will be here. Or let's put it this way, I'm not being thrown out of here. Yes. Uh, the, <laughs> there's a difference. Big difference. Big difference. Yes. Talk to me about that. You know, a lot of coaches, um, some coaches see it as a, a good thing. You always see it as a good thing when it comes to the security when you're recruiting. Your kids want to know you're going to be there for the four years. Now, kids also have the ability to leave you at the drop of a dime now and transfer and go play right away. And so you like to sell that when you're in homes to parents, the stability of the program, that I will be here. Everything I'm telling you is going to happen. It's going to come to fruition. And then personally, you, you want to be able to build something and it takes time. It's not easy, not in today's climate. So, you know, in this point in my career, because I'm 52, um, I will be 52 um, April 2nd, but I want stability in my life. I want a place that believes in me, that is going to invest in me and the vision and you know, URI made that commitment. And so it's really longevity for me at this point in my career and having time to build something great. Leaving a legacy is really important at this point in my career. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's I'm sure, the cell that closed the deal for Thor Bjorn, the athletic director. Full disclosure, in case you guys don't know, I, I've known Thor for a long time. I'm a friend of the program. I'm the public address announcer at the men's games. Um, and we should talk about that. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the, the concept of this commitment, I think, is, is hard for people to digest. Most men's deals aren't 10 years long. 
So, I mean, and, and frankly, at your base salary, which is, you know, I'm not big on honing in on these kinds of things. Um, this is a business. It's a business in order to be able to retain great talent and not have them jump back to their original playing days at Virginia where yes. it was touted and rumored and probably you could have gone and a whole bunch of things. You've got to make these kinds of solid agreements. But they're not easy to make uh, either from the, the university side. So um, that with Archie Miller's hire, all of a sudden the University of Rhode Island under President Palange, the former president was no wallflower either in terms of commitment to sports. The university is saying something about about its investment in these programs for net worth past just the ball bouncing through a hoop, correct? Yes. Talk to me about that. For me, that it wasn't my salary, it wasn't, it, uh, the long term of the deal was key for me, but it was more about the commitment from the university and the key people, not just the athletic director and, and President Parlange, but the donors and the boosters and the money that they're committing to the program with the, the viability of where it can take us. Resources recruit great talent, and not my salary, not Archie's salary, resources, not even sometimes the head coach. Kids look at the program itself. Where do I play? Do you have a practice facility? Do you charter? What's the budget like? Do you charter in this, in this deal? We do. I got the commitment from a, a great How booster. How um, Almost at all our flights in conference, um, we charter this year unless it's less than an hour, hour and a, two hours. You know, I'm not going to waste sixty or fifty thousand dollars going to Fordham, but we charter down to Davidson, we charter to Dayton, we charter to St. Louis. I'll charter down to UCF um, when we go to Orlando next season, and that's all from a, a five-year commitment from a booster that threw money at our program. So, in, and we fundraise. I fundraise for that. So, when you talk about those things. Now I know we can win here. Now I know they're committed, not just the university, not just key people, but... The, 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 so people understand the charter thing is, is a big deal. Um, commercial flights, travel, wear and tear. Um, I've been on charters. Game ends. I went to a charter in Dayton with, with Coach Hurley one day. Of course, I'm a Dayton grad. That probably doesn't sit well with you either, <laughs> based on the A-10 and its and the outcomes this year. Game was over at 9.30 in Ohio, in Dayton, Ohio. I was in bed in Cumberland, Rhode Island at 12.15. That's important. It's extremely important. Number one, especially on when we play Wednesday nights and the kids have class Thursday morning. They don't miss two days of school. Number two, rest and recovery. If you have to play again on Saturday, and you got to wait till the next day, get the kids up early, you spend a whole day travel. You know, the efficiency of getting back that night, recovery, all the things that, you know, parents want to hear. I don't want my, especially young women, I don't want my daughter missing two days of class for a game. And, and to give your kids the best chance to recover and get ready to play, say you're playing Dayton and then Fordham for us, two of the top teams in the league, and they're both on the road, it's extremely important. It gives you a competitive advantage. So you're talking about the kids and going, uh, the, the student athletes. I mean, a lot of people see this as a bunch of shenanigans. You know, the student athlete versus players versus, and now they're being able to, to, to get a couple of bucks uh, for their name uh, and likeness. Um, uh, let's not forget that the value of an education four years plus at the University of Rhode Island is significant. I'm really bullish on URI, but I'm just talking about college basketball in general. It still is a significant value. With this portal thing that you got going on right now, where kids can come and go and everything else, one of the things that seems to get lost in all of this, the coverage of the conversations is the academics surrounding this whole thing. I bet you it cannot be easy when a kid wants to, when a, when a player, when a student athlete wants to jump ship from one school to the next, to actually match up c classes and curriculum for the degree that they're pursuing. And that conversation never makes the sports page. But that's the stuff that you got to worry about. You got to take care of the whole. If you're going to make a promise to take care of the whole person, you got to take care of the whole person, right? Yes, it's extremely difficult um, when you have kids transferring in and out. First of all, you'll get hit by the NCAA. There's something called APR, and if a kid leaves your school below a certain grade point average, you lose a, a, a point. If they go to another school, which you do not control them anymore, 
They may not go to class. They may not graduate. You'll lose another point. You lose enough points in a certain period of time, you'll get the NCAAs taken away from you. You can't go to postseason now. So as coaches, I have to worry about manage that. Got to make sure, even when I lose kids, I still have to track those kids. And then when I take kids on, they, they have to have a certain grade point average to get into our graduate programs to come play for me. We have to offer that curriculum. It's, it's a lot more work. It's, it's a lot more work than people see. It's not just the basketball component. Academics, especially for women, we don't have the same pro career as most women. Small percentage play pro. Most of them go to Europe. Very small make it in the WNBA. Right. And so now that degree means something on the women's side much more than gotcha. it does on the men's side. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about the, the nature of the URI program, uh, where Tammy's brought it, where she thinks she can get it. Of course, we all know what the top of that hill is. Stay with us. Sorry. It's hard to say goodbye to this group. Um, to get to this point, uh, they mean a lot, and so I really wanted them to go out on top, and you know, they didn't get to, so it hurts my heart, because I love these kids. You know, I forgot to ask, is it, was that after Dayton, or was that after the, the NIT loss? That was after the final final, the final game, NIT loss. The relationship you have with these, with these student athletes is, is hardly describable. Um, I think your tears kind of explain it there. Retaining a group to be able to make a, a run here is hard. You've you've built stage one. You almost won the Atlantic 10 championship. Uh, this conversation is not about X's and O's and players and whether or not you're going to go back and win this thing. But it, the big picture I think people want to, to know is, is it really true that URI could match a UConn's legacy and success? Um, headline here, uh, by the way, if you, if you didn't see this game the other night, I know, listen, the triple overtime game that PC had with Xavier was one of the most incredible basketball events any of us have ever seen. Uh, so too was UConn NC State the other night. <laughs> and if we got a bunch of chauvinists out there who think that that's not the case, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with you. Uh, is that possible? Is UConn's type of following success possible? in Rhode Island? You know, it, on a different stage, it could be. Um, you know, it's, it's one step at a time. You know, what he's built there. Now Dawn Staley, one of my best friends, is South building Carolina. at South Carolina. Um, that was my teammate at Virginia, my backcourt mate, my, my partner in crime. Hmm. Um, at this stage <laughs> where we are in Rhode Island, um, we've got to build our own legacy. You know, anything's possible, but... Is it fair to ask the question? It just feels like what he's done, what they've done, what those women have done over time is, 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 a, is lightning in a bottle, you know, full Gamble Pavilions, full Civic Centers in Hartford, full in Bridgeport. Um, and do you measure it by fans in the stands? I, I, I guess that's the ultimate barometer in terms of... Self-sustainability, you do. A program that can... What Dawn, St Dawn Staley has the highest attendance in the country now. She does. Good she does. There, when she took that program over 14 years ago, there was 500 people in the stands. Mm -hmm. No one said South Carolina could do what UConn did. But the same thing, Tennessee was the original. No one said there'd be another Pat Summit. You're going to have to be, and you're, one of the reasons you accepted my invitation here, I'm sure, is, is, is a continued self-marketer and self-promoter. It's, it's incumbent that you continue to invest in, and actually invest more, it seems to me, in, in, in that end of it. So is Archie Miller, by the way. Look, I do the public address of URI. I know exactly where the, where the building gets crazy. I know exactly, and you know, sometimes I try to help it get crazy. But I know what it's like at 1,000, it's a tin can. I know it's like a 2500, which is where you capped out. It's pretty good. It can get crazy. That's where the high school championship crowds are. And it can get, and you feel like you were at mm -hmm. some place. At 3800, it starts to evolve into a place. At 4500, you can fool everybody. At 5500, we got a building. At 6500, the place is nuts and it can sell out. Good night, Irene. No one can win there. 
So I know how the building works. Mm -hmm. What level of that can you get to, and how do you do it? And I only got a couple of minutes here. First, you got to win. You got to put a product on the floor that people are proud of, that they know they're coming to great basketball and being a part of an atmosphere. And that is, you know, administration and myself, marketing ideas, things, targeting the right groups of people, but creating that frenetic atmosphere. And, and if we could get next year between 25 and four, and we start winning over the next two years, now I'm putting a team together over the next two years, that three years, four years, five years down the line, we're gonna be really good. Those, when we start talking 5,000, 6,500, when you're building your brand now, where the building is frenetic, it's energetic, and it's a buzz. And we build that in the community. Yeah, it's just a, it's, 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 a, it's actually the Ryan Center is, is quite an interesting facility. It's a real liability when it's empty, and it's a menace when it's full. You've never played in the dome. The With dome, Syracuse Dome. Well, that's I've been where, there. Watch well, the game. You ever play a women's game in there? So there's a lot of worse arenas. Uh, an arena that holds just under nine thousand for women's basketball, acoustic wise, and you can tape off the top and really fill the bottom. Uh, I played in the dome where there's 500 people and, and it's it is horrendous. <laughs> and we went to a national championship game against UConn years ago and with no one in the building. So I know what really bad is. Ryan Center is nowhere near that. I only have a minute here and this question perhaps is unfair, but a wise person once told me when I was coaching young ladies in high school and making mistake after mistake, that men develop socialization from competition and that women develop competition from socialization. Is that true? I'd have to agree with that. You know, that's why men are from where they're from and women are where they're from. Um, when the teams get along, they play harder. They do. And that's just... Not, so, not necessarily true with men. No. Men could hate each other. It doesn't matter because when they step between those lines, women, there's a reason why we're more sensitive, we're more compassionate. Relationships drive women, I feel, a lot of times. And so when you can pull your team together and they love each other, different level. Well, you better love them. Oh, I do. Because you are, I love you. Thank you. Don't so be a stranger. Much. I won't have me again. I love it. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Dan. Appreciate it. Final word and we can back. Stay with us. Uh, buy your tickets now for URI women's basketball. In fact, buy your tickets for both. Cooley, relax. We're all buying your tickets. Good night.